who will give the first of his workshop talks on characteristic classes and A1 homotopy theory. Thanks, Mark. So the mic is working. OK. So thanks, uh, first, thanks, uh, thanks a lot uh, for the organizers to have put this, uh, this, this wonderful summer school here. Uh, for me, A1 homotopy uh, theory started in 1999 when I was I attended the course by Fabien Aurel. It was pretty much the same style here. By, the way, by, by that time, we knew very less on uh, A1 homotopy. So it's, it's really marvelous to, uh, to have witnessed so this, this, like, uh, this blow up of, uh, of a theory, uh, uh, which, which now flourished in so many di directions. Motivic homotopy started by Vyvesky and Morel. So today, I will, uh, uh, um, for these four courses, I will speak about uh, characteristic classes and, uh, uh, and especially in motivic homotopy theory. So that's a, a, a wide subject. Uh, but I'd like to start by some uh, historical uh, comments first. And just, just uh, like Mike saying that what, uh, from what uh, theory comes. And actually, there is a, a, a really incredible year for algebraic topology and geometric topology. It's 1935. <coughs> uh, in this year, several several stuff was uh, was uh, was put in light. So first, there was a PhD of Stiefel and a work independent work on of Whitney, which introduces two things. First, a, a, a definition of fiber bundle, but as we know now, and then their characteristic classes. Classes. So, what which now know we know as the Stiefel Whitney characteristic classes. Okay, and in, in the same time, so characteristic classes lives in cohomology. We know that now, but in the same time, in same year, uh, there was a, 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 an international conference in Moscow on algebraic topology, and where uh, Kolmogorov and Alexander independently in the same. Uh, Alexander introduced cohomology theory. I mean, co singular cohomology that we know now. And also cup product, of course, which. <coughs> so at that time, the, all these theories were entangled. Cup product was, uh, the name came from Whitney in, uh, slightly after in 37. <coughs> okay, and so uh, it was realized afterwards that characteristic classes are, are really cohomology classes, or in the same time, let's say. Then the theory evolved a little. So, from Stiefel Whitney classes, then we arrived in 1942 to, Pontri to a work of Pontryagin, which define Pontryagin classes associated to smooth real vector bundles. And then in 1947, I think, it's Chern that uh, defined the 1946, sorry. <coughs> Chern introduces Chern classes of complex vector bundles. OK, here in these two words, the Grassmannian come started to appear. OK, of course, uh, so characteristic classes uh, are associated to fiber bundle or principal bundles with respect to some group G. And so also in the same times, our obstruction theory was, uh, was settled. And uh, I, I should say also that, that uh, obstruction classes are also some kind of obstruction classes, but for other groups. So uh, in this talk, I won't speak about these obstruction classes, and I will focus on vector bundles. So the groups involved are GLN, and sometimes we'll see SP2N, by the way. OK, and I, I want to finish this, uh, st this story by uh, a very surprising work, 1944, of Tom, Tom Cobordism. Uh, so first, he proved a very surprising uh, Theorem. So it's known now, uh, it's well known now, that characteristic classes are not enough to describe the homotopy type of the diffeomorphism type of uh, varieties. You have to take account in, uh, 
into account other information, such like the Pi one, for example. Or, but uh, uh, one one of the result of Tom is that uh, the cobordism classes of unoriented manifolds are determined by uh, their Pontryagin by the by the Pontryagin classes of the tangent bundle. Actually, by the Pontryagin numbers of uh, of uh, <coughs> Of a, t of a tangent space. So that's, that's really surprising. And then, of course, cobordism uh, uh, just uh, evolved into uh, what will become a generalized cohomology theory that we will, s we will uh, see now, and, and, and more of this. And I will pass this, this, this story, which is topological. And I will now go to the, <coughs> to the motivic homotopy classes. So there are a lot of. Uh, of dots here, which is a, a development of stable homotopy theory, classical by Adams and uh, several people. And I want to now start about uh, with motivic homotopy. Are there questions or comments? No. So uh, for motivic homotopy, uh, I would say that everything started with Vyvesky's proof of uh, Milner conjecture. So it's 1996 or about this. Then he introduced many, many, many new objects in this motivic homotopy, which is uh, A1 homotopy, which is uh, to be developed, such as algebraic cobordism, steam rod operation, motivic homology, and so on, and, and, and orientation theory. And then there, were the, there was the contribution of many people. For, so for me, it's Morel, because uh, as I said, uh, all of this started in 1999 in a course is and but there, then I should mention also Panin, Levin, which actually worked with, with Fabien Marc, and then uh, several, uh, several other people. So I will start about this. So it's uh, oriented, oops, orientation theory in motivic homotopy, which, uh, had, which at that time was called A1 homotopy, by the way. Okay, so the plan for me today is to start with uh, uh, cohomology theory, let's say. Cohomology theory in motivic homotopy. Then I will st state the basics of uh, this orientation theory. And uh, if I time allows, I, will, I want to speak about the algebraic opt map that we have uh, encountered eta many times. Okay. Okay. So let's first start. <coughs> So in this first place, so, uh, with uh, the talk of Fabian, we have seen the unstable Hewan homotopy, and there is a lot to say about it. And but, uh, in this talk, I will focus on in the stable uh, motivic homotopy category. So let's recall there is this H A1. I will put the A1 upstairs because I want to look at the pointed homotopy category. <coughs> and we deduce from it the stable homotopy category. One, one thing that, that I will, uh, one particularity that uh, fr in my talk will be that I work over some smooth, smooth, some scheme. S is a scheme which is, well, it will be Noetherian. It's useful for things, but not much more. And so we can define, so we have seen this in the talk of Fabian, the, talk, the definition of HA1 of K, but of course it can be defined over some scheme S. And we have a stabilization procedure with respect to P1. This is the infinite suspension with respect to P1. So sometimes we can write this. <coughs> so this is the P1 spectra category, which was defined in the talk uh, of, uh, of Kirsten, for example. So the distinctive property is that recall that we have this sphere P1, which is uh, over S. I don't indicate the S, but uh, which is pointed by the point at infinity, and it splits in the Hewan homotopy as H1 smash GM. So we have three possible spheres, <coughs> and we uh, uh, tensor invert the P1 
P1, so which has the effect to in tensor invert S1 and Gm. So this category is, uh, is a stable infinity category. By the way, I will mostly work in the associate homotopy category. By <coughs> okay. Uh, so some notation. So some I use this notation. 1s is the unit, so it's the sphere spectrum. It's the infinite suspension of S0. And also I use 1, 1, which is uh, the infinite suspension of P1, but smash S minus 2. If you okay. And uh, also I use this notation, which comes from uh, triangulated category. 1, 1 is just the infinite suspension of S1. Okay? So a particular thing here is that you see there is this, tet, uh, this uh, twist here, which is called the test twist. And it, it will imply that all cohomology theory, which are represented here, are bigraded. So definition, I take E, an object of SH of S. I say that E is a ring spectrum or ring motivic spectrum if uh, E is a commutative monoid in, so let me state it precisely here. I really want uh, an object in the homotopy category, which is the, uh, the triangulated monoidal <laughs> category, which means that uh, I, I, I just want a monoid in the weak sense. I don't, uh, I don't need for what I will speak, or what I will mention, uh, the higher structure. On, uh, I don't need an infinity ring structure, but of course it's, it, uh, most of the example will have this infinity uh, ring structure. So then to this datum, I associate a theory, cohomology theory, H and I for X over S smooth, and n and i, two integers. Oops, sorry, can you read? Yes, okay. I define h and i, x, which is just so, let's, let's I use this notation, infinite suspension of x plus a disjoint, disjoint point added um, with question e, so twisted i time, shifted n times. So this notation comes from, uh, um, Motivic, homo, motivic theory, and it's quite useful anyway, anyway, here. So these are the homotopy classes computed in this category. So I can put this decoration if you want, but uh, usually it's clear in which category I compute this, okay? So a good thing here is that you have a product of this cohomology, so you have cup product. Yeah, that's, thanks you. To be clear, this is E tensor one SI shifted N times. And if I'm not, maybe I can write it here. It's E smash S N minus I smash GM smash I in the, I think it's right, yeah. In the notation, in the topological notation. Okay, so v this is a, useful notation. Okay, so on this cohomology, I have a cup product as in the usual theory. You see that map uh, cohomology classes are just maps. So let's say A, B is in E, N, I, X times E, M, J, X. Then these maps actually corresponds to, these uh, classes actually corresponds to map A from uh, sigma infinity x plus to e i n and b, well, we can figure out b. And then I can define the product a b by the following composite, which <coughs> first I use the diagonal map delta and it goes to sigma infinity x cross x plus now, well, I did not define the monoidal structure on stable homotopy and on HA1, but because I added the point, this is the same thing than sigma infinity x plus smash or tensor product, sorry, c 
assuming q to x plus. Okay, and now I can take a tensor b. This goes to e i, well, yeah, okay, i m tensor e j m. And then I can use the product on, on e, u e, let's say. Then the, uh, it goes from e tensor e to e, so it will go to e i plus j n plus m, okay? <coughs> so this terminology of cup product was uh, very resilient. As I said, this uh, introduction of product and cohomology was uh, really a, a great advance, and then this, uh, this term terminology has survived uh, through the years. It, it, it feels a bit w strange in, uh, in Hewan homotopy. For example, you, you don't call the product on char groups, and it will come uh, uh, here, the intersection product, you don't call it a cup product, but in this, uh, in this, uh, for, from this point of view, it's actually a, a cup product. Okay. There's also a nice thing that you have on this cohomology, so, and, and it, it's on this representable cohomology, is that they are defined not only on smooth schemes, but actually on the on the whole of the A1 homotopy category. So you can define if X is a pointed A1 homotopy type. Over S, then you can define E N I X, and usually you put a tilde because this is, this, this is the reduced cohomology, <coughs> and it's just the map from infinite suspension of X to E and same twist I N. Okay, so you have immediately an extension like this of the cohomology theory. <coughs> this will be useful. On and why. For example, in the notes, so you, you can look at it uh, out of this, uh, just of, of this definition, you can define cohomology with support just by looking at this extension to the A1 homotopy type and looking at cofibers. Okay. So this was the first preliminary thing. Maybe I, I should give some examples. <coughs> So there are plenty of examples of cohomologies which are actually representable by uh, motivic ring spectra. Actually, so the, this category, SH of S, is done for that. So, so you have, in, 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 the definition, in the definition of Hewan homotopy, you have uh, several properties, uh, but, but not so, so many. So here you have Hewan invariance <coughs> and the Niznevich uh, cohomology called descent. So Naturally, each cohomology here, each representable cohomology will satisfy these two properties, a one invariance. And uh, so Niznevich descent actually corresponds to a long exact sequence of type uh, of meyer vietoris type, except that it's uh, associated with Niznevich distinguished squares. <coughs> okay. And uh, yeah, well, these are the most, uh, and, and also for, sorry, because we are in the stable homotopy category, uh, uh, you have a P1 uh, suspension isomorphism. Okay, so the examples now. Uh, so, of course, any veil cohomology theory will be representable. So, these are defined over, defined over a field little k and with coefficients in another field, in a characteristic zero field, big k, okay? Let me remind you, there is a Durham cohomology, so characteristic of k is zero, and little k equal big k. There is also the Betty cohomology, And you have to choose an embedding of K into C. <coughs> but there's also the Eladic et al. geometric, let's say, uh, 
cohomology. So here, let me simplify. I will take k equal k bar and k equal ql. Or actually, well, uh, the, the, the you can avoid this assumption and that you have to take cohomology of x extended to k bar without this Galois action. And there is also the rigid cohomology of Berthelot. And this is a characteristic of k equal p, and k is the fraction field of the width vectors. OK, so the point is that uh, um, normally, veil cohomologies are defined on smooth proper varieties. But actually, all this cohomology admits uh, an extension to, to smooth varieties, smooth open varieties, let's say. <coughs> And it's a bit trickier here because there is also a, there is another extension called crystalline cohomology, and this crystalline cohomology is not a one invariant. But uh, so let's say extension to SMK leads to the maybe I just I should mention that to the notion of mixed veil cohomology. which were introduced by uh, Sizinski and myself. Uh, reference are in the notes. Uh, um, and uh, what's, what's good with this mixed veil cohomology is that you take the Eilenberg synod axioms for this cohomology, plus you add the Cunet formula. Cunet formula. This implies that the cohomology is representable cohomology representable in SH of K, eventually tensor with, uh, with big K, OK? So you can build a, a ring spectrum which represents all these cohomology extended to smooth schemes. So if I re want to refer to this uh, cohomology, I will represent it, I will denote the spectrum by H epsilon. Is it OK? So epsilon is DR, B, L or rig. Okay, so that's the first uh, set of cohomology. So, uh, and you can see that in this case, the, the critical uh, critical property is A1 invariant. <coughs> but well, okay. Second example, it's less, uh, it's more interesting. You take K, the fill, and you embed it into into R, and you look at the cohomology H star X R singular cohomology of the real points with integral coefficients. <coughs> okay, so this is representable by a ring spectrum. So you can take the you can take a real realization and and a, uh, and a joint map, and so <coughs> presented by ring spectrum H sigma in SH of K. And beware that uh, if you look at real points then the, and, and you look what, what the spheres become, then you will get that H sigma N I of X is actually isomorphic to H N minus I X R Z. Okay. So this is uh, an exercise. I don't think we 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 put this in the in the list of. <coughs> okay. So, but th this is really a variant of Betty Komoji. It's uh, it will be important. And after that, after these kinds of uh, topological Komoji, we also we also have some absolute Komoji. <coughs> which will be very important in this talk. So the second set of example is the absolute cohomology. So absolute uh, is, uh, is a terminology due to Bailinson to make a difference between this cohomology, which are supposed to be R 
I don't know, geometric cohomology and the absolute one. And, and for us, it refers to the fact that these, uh, these uh, first v, the ring spectra I, I, will, I will present are defined over any base, more or less. And also they are stable by pullbacks, but I, I will come, come to that. So the first one is motivic cohomology. over S. So actually, it's a spectrum. It's a ring spectrum, an infinite ring spectrum, uh, defined by Spitzbeck. Over any base. Uh, over S. And we know that on, uh, it coincides by various key. In, uh, well, if say S is of characteristic zero, <coughs> so I will denote this by H M Z S. Okay. Uh, so what are the distinctive properties of this? Uh, so the motivic cohomology in degree two n n of X uh, with integral coefficient. So this is the Komoji that I defined there, but for this ring spectra, is isomorphic to the char group of X if uh, X is uh, smooth over uh, S and uh, S is regular, S is a Dedekin ring over all field. S less than one, S regular. Okay, uh, we also have that H N N N N N motif of a field K, and we learned that it's important to to know this cohomology theory is isomorphic to the Milnor K theory of K. Actually, so the construction of Spitzbeck is to build this uh, spectrum over a Dedekin ring first by l by by taking higher Cho groups defined by block, and then uh, the, the key formula that I mentioned <coughs> key formula is that if I have a morphism from T to S, I'm anticipating the rest of the course. There is a Bastian Schumtor F upper star, um, we have that HM, F upper star of this ring spectrum is HMZT. So for, for T a field and S a Dedekin ring, this is a property. It's very, a very important property. And for in view of a case, if for example, F is dominant, this is by definition, okay? So, of course, this motivic cohomology theory business was started a long time ago by uh, conjecture of Bellinson's uh, definition of block for higher true groups, and then definition of uh, Vervesky over a field. Uh, uh, so there is also a definition of a ring spectrum, uh, which, which Vervesky calls the island bear maclen motivic spectrum in his lectures. But we don't know that both that these uh, ring spectra coincide in general. Okay. Are there questions about this? Okay, so this is the important thing here. Second, we have a K theory. Algebraic K theory defined by Quillen uh, over S a regular scheme. S regular is represented. by a ring spectrum, an infinite ring spectrum actually, which is denoted KGL of S. Uh, so one of the distinctive property of this, uh, this theory is that it's periodic. So uh, it's two one periodic, 
meaning that there exists an isomorphism that uh, we denote by beta, usually beta from KGLS1 to KGLS. Okay, and of course, with, and with this notation, the distinctive property of this theory is that KGLNI of X, where X over S is smooth, is K quillen K two I minus N of S. Okay, and so you can see, you can see. So this is an isomorphism. Sorry, you can see this uh, periodicity in this formula. Okay, and this is how we build the ring spectrum. Actually, of course, we can define. So this object KGLS can be defined over any scheme S by the same formula pullback or just uh, uh, the fact is that over any base it represents the Weibel homotopy invariant K theory. This is a theorem of a Sizinski. Okay, and the last, uh, the last example I want to mention is the algebraic cobordism, but uh, uh, well, I will come to this, uh, this ring spectral, spectrum afterward. Okay, so there, that's, that's a lot of cohomology theory and ring spectrum that you can define with different uh, distinctive flavor. And uh, before going to the definition of orientation theory, I just want to come back to the Picard group, actually. So this, this was already uh, uh, stated before. So we look at the group GM, group scheme, and we know that in any case, the Picard group of any scheme S is the torsors on GM. So these torsors defined by Philip. Uh, I can take the Nisnevich topology, as he explained. We can take Etal or, or FPPF or Zariski. Okay. Uh, but uh, in uh, in uh, homotopy theory, in Hewan homotopy theory, and actually in A1, any any homotopy theory, you can actually define the classifying space BGM of this group scheme GM. So I will see it as in well, we can see it in the category of sheaves on smooth scheme, Nisnevich sheaves, infinity categorically, if you want. But we, we can actually map it into HA1 of S. OK, so this is just by applying the A1 localization functor. <coughs> of course, if we, if we compute here, what we get is that the, the homotopy classes of map from, let's say, S to BGM so I put A1 like this, is equal to the H1 S GM more or less by definition, okay? <coughs> but in general, this group is not A1 invariant when S is not regular, but here, I, 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 I uh, it's too, so it's just Nisnevich non-A1. Oh. So I, I just want to stress that you can always define something like this, okay? And, and, and but you have a N1 localization functor, so you can always go from the Picard group of S equal to these torsors to the homotopy classes of map from X to BGM, but and now let's say in A1. So let's let's write A1 here. So uh, sorry, it's S. Okay, so uh, all, the, all this was the, in the book of Morel and Wojewski, by the way. So there is always a map like this, and it's an isomorphism, is an isomorphism if S is regular. Okay? <coughs> so I have a good classifying space, I can A1 localize it, and, and I have always a map like this. And in some cases, it's uh, an isomorphism. It will be enough. For me, and also I want to, to recall so that there is a, a theory <coughs> in the book of Morel and Wojewski. Uh, and also, it was also used in uh, maybe in 
Burt talk. Uh, so we can compute this object PGM as the co-limit of M of Pn. So, and this is P infinity. So this co-limit is taken in the category of sheaves or in the infinity category here. And I can map it here. So I think this isomorphism work uh, is in A1 homotopy. I'm not sure. But, uh, okay, anyway, in A1 homotopy category, it's okay. So BGM is actually represented by this P infinity, which is a, a particular case of Gra Grassmannian, by the way. Okay, so I have now all the players. And I can go to the second part. What's time? Oh. Okay. <coughs> so the definition of the following definition is uh, completely uh, uh, taken from topology. So let's E be a motivic ring spectrum over S an orientation could be a, a, an algebraic orientation or a DL orientation, but we just say orientation of E will be a class, is a class, cohomology class C in E tilde 2, 1 of P infinity over S. So remember that I have extended my cohomology theory to H A1. So this is pointed by, uh, by the point at infinity such that uh, when you restrict C to P1 of S, so this belongs to E tilde 2, 1, P1 of S, uh, pointed by infinity, maybe I should add this. Then by, by, by stability, this is isomorphic to E0, 0 of S. And from this, uh, through this isomorphism, it maps to unit, so, so this is the unit of a ring spectrum. Okay. <coughs> so exactly the same definition as in topology. So the good thing is that out of this uh, simple cohomology class, you immediately get, you immediately get a map this. Uh, so for x over s smooth, you get a map from the Picard group of x. So I said it mapped to x bgm in the A1 homotopy category. So actually I can add a base point and take the pointed maps. Then I can apply the infinite suspension functor and goes to sigma infinity, x plus going to sigma infinity, bgm. Okay, but now what's, what's, uh, what's c? Let me write it here. c is actually by definition a map from uh, sigma infinity of p infinity, s to e, one, two, and BGM is identified to P infinity, so I can map this to sigma infinity of X plus E one two, which is precisely E two one of X, okay? So this composite map, I will denote it C one, and it's a uh, first chain class to a line bundle. It associates some cohomology class here. It's very important to remark from this point that this map here is not additive. So that C1 is not a morphism of group in general. Abelian groups, okay. <coughs> okay, good. Where is my magic uh, eraser? 
Uh, no, because I. Uh, well, here, here. Well, it's just this class C. Uh, so you know the cohomology of P one is is uh, is the sum of two things. Cohomology of P one. S is the sum of the cohomology of a base point. Let's say star star. Plus the reduced cohomology of P1 of S. Okay, so by, by this definition, I'm just saying that C has no uh, constant part here, and it's the same thing for for this uh, this class here, C1. I'm just wondering why you have this tilde on one and no tilde on the Ah, here because of this uh, because of the stem <coughs> sus suspension. Uh, because of a suspension isomorphism. Well, this, uh, this, this is the map, so. Uh, it's just a stabilization, stabilization map. I mean. Uh, I think it's all stretched out. What? I think it's all stretched out. It's all? Stretched out, it's all okay. Yeah. Is it okay or? In some sense, I should I should say, uh, what if you want tilde? This should be something like this. <coughs> okay. Um, okay. So maybe examples. Uh, easy. So first one is motivic cohomology. So I said that let's say S is regular, or actually S is spec Z would be enough. <coughs> then I said that CH1 of S is isomorphic to HM21 of S. And we know from Bert Stoke that this is a Picard group of S, okay? Uh, actually, it, 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 this, this isomorphism extends to any any and scheme so you can obtain also this isomorphism m p infinity of s and then you just have to remember that this is uh, z okay so you take uh, and map here totally one and you map it to c okay and this gives the orientation so it's uh, uh, actually it's more or less it's build in the, is the orientation is built in the construction of a motivic uh, island bear MacLean spectrum. Okay, now second for mixed veil cohomology, mixed veil cohomology. So actually, what we what we build out of this mixed veil cohomology, like for veil cohomology, uh, when did you see cycle classes also? So there exists cycle class, a cycle class. So now uh, X is is smooth over a field. So what you have is a class of an algebraic cycle, CHNX. It goes to uh, epsilon cohomology to N of X. So I should add a twist here. It's N, but uh, uh, one remark is that uh, uh, mixed veil cohomology are, are periodic with respect to the twist. So this twist can be trivialized, so usually it's just h to n epsilon of x. Okay. okay, and so same construction will give you the, uh, this class C, and it will give the usual churn classes, more or less tautologically. Okay, maybe another example now is for k theory. So k theory is also oriented, orientable. Um, the class C is uh, so this uses the periodicity <coughs> so for KGL S it works over any base so uh, we are over P infinity of S 
and varies over this uh, these schemes varies the topological <laughs> bundle line bundle usually it's denoted like this o minus one right I take lambda <coughs> and now we want to give a class in uh, kgl s kgl to one of p infinity of s okay but uh, I said this is isomorphic to k0 of p infinity of s. Okay, and here I have a class. Uh, I will take 1 minus the class of uh, this line bundle in the, in the Grothendieck group lambda. Okay, and if you pay attention to this isomorphism, it goes to beta minus 1 times 1 minus lambda. So, uh, a priori, you have a class in KZ, K, KGL 0, 0, and to put it in the correct uh, degree, you multiply by this class beta minus 1. So, it's, it's an artificial. What? What beta? Uh, it was the, 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 the class that I defined, which, uh, <coughs> which it's the beta periodicity map. So, it's KGL 1, 2 goes to KGL. Thanks. Just to, just for a recall. So it's it's actually this map be beta is part of a, is almost the, there by construction of KGL. Or any bit. Okay, and you can check that this uh, defines uh, an orientation because you are in this Grothendieck group. Okay. So now comes. Um, Important theorem. It's a second step. So <coughs> okay. So this is a projective bundle theorem. <coughs> projective bundle <coughs> theorem so what does it say so take x as over s smooth uh, and um, i look at p over x a projective bundle uh, of rank n so p is the projective space associated to v and v or rank n plus one if you will. Okay, then I can build a map from the cohomology of P to the following sum, sum from I to zero, from I from zero to N of the cohomology of the base X. And, uh, sorry, it goes in the other direction, <coughs> actually. So to a, a collection of, of scalars, lambda, lambda zero, lambda N, it will maps to the following sum from Ry going to 0 to n of p upper star lambda i times uh, c1 o minus 1 to the i. Okay. Is it okay? And uh, p is the projection from p to x. Okay, then the assertion is that this map is an isomorphism. Okay, so uh, okay, so I decided to let this for exercises. So this is non-trivial. You have to prove that some uh, homotopy classes are zero and some homotopy classes are one. So this is definitely non-trivial, <coughs> but uh, I, le I, I left that for the exercises. The point is that out of this uh, simple relation, you can, by the so-called by the method of Grothendieck, you can define all the over churn classes. Now, if v of x is uh, 
Victor bundle of rank n. There, there, there exist unique classes ci of v in e to i i of x such that the following relation hold is the sum from y going to zero to n of p upper star ci v times uh, yes times c1 uh, sorry of O projective bundle associated to V minus one. There is a minus here, and I L take V n to the i four. I think this is the correct uh, normalization. Okay. So this relation holds because so you have to be careful about the the degree. Uh, so uh, this should live in the commodity of P of V. And because of, uh, of this projective bundle theorem, there, are, there exist unique classes, CI like, like that, such that, sorry, I should say, C0 of V equal one. You have to add this uh, condition. Okay, so this uh, immediately gives you higher churn classes, like I said. Uh, <coughs> So this satisfies a lot of, uh, this satisfies all good properties, so churn classes are, out of this uh, definition, you can see that they are stable and a pullback. They uh, are invariant under isomorphisms of V over X. Uh, they also, if X is, uh, because X is not here, they also are nilpotent. And, uh, yes, yeah, so. Mm. So now I have 10 minutes. Uh, So I don't know either, yeah. Well, okay, I think I, I will let this for the exercises. So you can, you can also prove many properties. For, for example, there is an important uh, uh, principle, which is the splitting principles, which allows to, to reduce the computation of churn classes of some vector bundle to the computation of churn classes of line bundles. Uh, but this will be for the exercises. Out of this, you can deduce the, the witness M formula for those who knows. It will also be in the exercises. Okay, so you have, uh, out of these simple axioms, you have all the, the classical uh, properties of churn classes, except that, I will I recall, beware, C1 of L, and so L prime is different from C1 of L, C1 of L prime in general. So the third churn class is not necessarily additive. So this, I will, uh, I will, uh, uh, give more details about this in the second talk, but I, I just wanted to to state now uh, what's special to motivic homotopy theory, and it's the algebraic op map. So if there's no questions, okay. Uh, so Fabian told us how how we can build. Uh, this map eta uh, and see it in the unstable homo in, the, in some unstable homotopy groups via Minorvit K theory. Uh, but actually it exists also over over relative bases. So the definition is as follows. You look at the map A2 minus zero going to P1. Uh, it's XY going to x, y in homogeneous coordinate. And now if you compute uh, this map, let's say this is eta unstably. Uh, if you compute it in the, for example, stable homotopy category, stably 
it gives a map from sigma infinity flow. Oh, sorry, I'm using my notation. It's a map 1s, 1, 1, going to 1s. OK? So if I use this notation, cohomotopy groups, P and I of s is the cohomology represented by the sphere spectrum. So it's uh, sigma infinity s plus going to 1s i j. This map eta lives in negative degree pi minus 1 pi minus 1 of s. And it, it exists for any, any base s. Uh, also, we can continue the game. We can also define uh, a class bracket u for unit. So if u, let's say x or s is smooth, and we take a map u in gm of x, uh, a function on x which is invertible, a global function, then it corresponds to a map u from x to gm, let's say gm s. <coughs> OK. Um, and so it, it will, but now we can push this to a pointed gm. I mean, we can, this defines a map from x plus to gm s1, like this. And in this, with this notation, it's a map from in pi one one of x. Okay. And actually, I can also define the angle u, which, which are which over over field corresponds to a quadratic form. <coughs> but here it will just be one plus eta times u is the same notation than Fabian's. Okay. There's a special element which is very important. It's element epsilon which is minus correct definition minus minus one okay so this element is also defined so because of degree we see that this is in pi zero zero of x and this element live in pi zero zero of x so actually it's an endomorphism of a sphere spectrum it's defined over any base and uh, the good thing about this uh, cohomotopy here is that so uh, actually, this, this groups here acts on any cohomology theory. So eta and epsilon acts on cohomology theory. And the link with the orientation theory is this now. <coughs> this proposition, let E uh, be a multi spectrum. S, then if E is orientable, is orientable, so meaning that there exists an orientation of, of E, this implies that the action of eta on E, so let's do it like this, is zero. And it implies also, by the way, that the action of epsilon on E is minus one, I think. Yes. Okay. So just uh, I mean, it's just tensor product. This map is an endomorphism of uh, E. Yeah, so it, it induces. So you can uh, you can also yeah you can use a composition by for the, from the definition of cohomology. Yeah, but you see also that it's also that you have a you have such a an action on E, and now E is a one is an algebra over one S, and then when you have a ring spectra with an action like this, you get an action of. A and uh, ah, yes, yeah, sorry, sorry, uh, of degree minus one minus one. This one is uh, of degree zero. That's right. Okay, so. Whoa. Okay, so uh, the proof goes like this. So uh, it's a, <coughs> it's a theorem of of Fabian. You can look at the 
first inclusion of P1 to, into P2, and you can compute the homotopy cofiber, and it's going to be A2 minus 0, and the map here will be eta. Okay. <coughs> and now, if you come back to the definition of, of your orientation, you will see that C will, in particular, give you a splitting of this map, yota here, so that if you compute in the stable homotopy category, it will exactly say, say that because yota is split, then this map eta must be zero, okay, because it's a boundary. So it's a homotopy exact sequence. Cofiber sequence. When you tensor with E, it be, will become a, a homotopy exact sequence or a longer sequence in cohomology, okay? So eta is zero, and by the definition of, of, of uh, epsilon here, then, uh, I, I mean, because eta equal, equal zero, you will see that this, this u bracket u acts by zero, and it, by, by identity, sorry, and it means that e epsilon acts by minus one because of uh, this sign here. What you can see is that uh, uh, then the cohomology is uh, uh, anti-commutative. Maybe I, 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 was, I, I want to, I just want to finish by some uh, general theorem. There's the proof in the notes, but I won't have time to give the proof. Uh, so we see here exactly that eta is the first obstruction to the existence of an orientation of E, because it's only, it deals only with this first uh, uh, inclusion of P1 into P2, but we want some class in P infinity, so we want to split all the, all the over inclusion. Uh, um, so it's only one obstruction for orientability, but it should not be the, the only one, ex except that we have a, a theorem, <coughs> which is due to Morel first, and then Szynski and myself, which says the following, let E be a rational motivic ring spectrum, then uh, the following conditions are equivalent. E is orientable, is equivalent to say that eta acts trivially on zero. So it means that for rational uh, uh, ring spectra, eta is, the, the, is exactly the obstruction to be orientable. Okay, so, uh, well, so I, I won't have time to to explain the definition, but uh, it, 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 it goes from maybe, it goes from this thing. You have a decomposition of a stable homotopy category into two parts, the plus part and the minus part. <coughs> on this part, uh, eta acts trivially, and on this part, eta is invertible. And uh, this part is exactly the oriented category, and actually it's equivalent to the category of, of rational motifs that we have already encountered. But the interesting point is that there is a, a minus part here, even with rational coefficients, and, and this is what I will uh, describe in the next course. Maybe I should add that in topology, it's known that, that that's, uh, that's why, that's uh, what Fabien told me when I was in uh, when I was under his supervision, it's known that uh, rational homotopy is all cohomology theory in uh, SH top rational are orientable. Actually, they are more or less island Bermaclean spectra. And this is one of the difference with in this motivic uh, setting. Okay, sorry for being a little bit over time. I finish here, sorry.